I'll send you with a five gallon bucket, a new spray gun, you'll need a wrench. Looks like I got 50 feet of working hose. And this little bottle has some mineral oil in it. And we need to lubricate the piston every time you use it, uh, like once a day, start and stop. So I plugged the machine in. It's got two hoses attached to it. The big one attached to the front is the one that sucks up the paint. And just throw that in your gallon pail. The other one is a return hose that's useful when you're cleaning it. So this just dumps the paint back out or the soapy water back out. You can throw that in the bucket too. Um, soap and water for cleanup if you're using latex paint. This adjusts the pressure. Uh, generally start it just pointing straight up. You can turn it up if you don't feel like you're pushing enough paint. You can turn it down if it feels like it's spitting too hard at you. Generally does not need to be all the way up. Somewhere in the middle is a good setting. There's a power switch right here and your hose connects right beneath that. We're gonna lubricate that up with a little bit of mineral spirits and I'll check and make sure that this is um, free of paint. You shouldn't have to mess with that unless yours gums up on you. Here we are attaching the hose. Just wanna snug that connection up. You don't have to crank it down or anything, but you don't want your paint to leak out all over the place. This hose is under pressure when you do it, so just make sure that your connection's tight. Leave your wrench right with the machine. Next to it is a little two-direction mode. When it points at the hose, it's going to go out the hose. When it points down, it's going to come out the return line and back into your can. So when you're in use, generally you're pointing at your hose. It's going to come out your spray gun, and it'll look like that. We want to do that when we um, prime the pump. We can prime the pump too by setting this off, flicking this on. You'll hear the pump run and you'll hear the sound change when it works up enough pressure. I'm going to turn it off and put the gun on and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The last guy I loaned it to didn't give me the top of the gun back, so I ordered a new one. Uh, it was pretty cheap actually. But you can see it's a little lightsaber handle. It's got some safety features to keep you from hurting yourself, but this top screws off here and there's a filter inside to filter your paint at the end. And there's a tip that goes on the end of it here that I'll screw on and show you. And it's just spray, pull and spray and spray you can lock it if you want it to run continuously this one will throw a 10 inch fan and you'll just want to have a cardboard shield or a plastic shield next to the window when you come up to it to get this apart you just jerk this guard off the bottom here it's got a little split in it it'll let you pull it off and then you unscrew the head inside is a mesh screen filter and that'll have to be washed with soap and water when you're done. And that's what the gun looks like. There's that mesh screen filter. That catches any paint boogers or junk that accidentally gets sucked up into the pump before it goes onto the house. Inside the box is a spray tip and a guard. These two things work together. One's just to kind of keep your hand out of it. The other one regulates how much paint comes out of the the end of the gun and controls the shape of it. You can buy these uh, down to I think four inches wide and they're kind of really precise. Uh, but you, this was a 10 inch fan and it's good for spraying most of your siding. I'm going to screw that onto the top. I put a drop of oil on the threads here just to keep the paint from causing everything to stick together. When you've got it, this little hole will be at the top of your gun so everything's in a straight line across the top and that's uh, where your tip thing fits in. The directions are on the back of the package here and I'll just send that with you. I've taken the tip back off the gun. This little piece has to fit in there 
it's shaped on one side so it'll only fit one way they give you some help with the tip it's got a little tool on the end of it so you can reach down in there and just set it in there that should be the way it looks paint goes through that hole it's pressurized and goes through this little nozzle on this end you don't typically have to take all this apart you just need to run soapy water through it to clean it up um, you do have to take this part this handle apart it unscrews right here and again you pull this off just with force you just pull that and there's a mesh filter in there that needs to be rinsed clean before we put it away this you might want to take off but you can turn off your paint flow which is convenient just by turning this thing and then the arrow points towards the direction that you're spraying paint so that you're ready to go that way you don't accidentally set your gun down and squeeze the trigger and lose half a gallon of paint onto the grass or something like that before you catch it You can see some of the air being forced out of the pump. That's the pump priming itself. Once we're running water out of there, or paint, we're ready to stop the pump and switch it into the hose. You can start to hear the sound change when the pump's ready and bubbles have stopped coming out of my hose although someone left me kind of a little bit of dirty cloudy mist coming out of it so I'm just gonna run it for a minute and get it clean this is what a loose connection looks like just in case you're wondering. That could be paint. Right now it's just water, so I'm just letting it run. But if you see that, we just need to tighten these connections with two wrenches. As soon as I tighten that up, you can see the hose start to pressurize. I'm going to turn the pump off now and move this doohickey over to that. This just changes the direction of flow and it's going to pressurize and then shut off when it reaches pressure. This is the pressure regulator. So the pump will only run about that much. It's pressurized the hose as long as there's no leaks. Here I got a little bit of a leak at the front of my thing. I'll tighten that up for you. But unless I turn the pressure up, or if I turn the pressure down, it's only going to run when necessary. So once it's pressurized, this pump only runs just every so often just to keep up the pressure. What's that thing do, Maggie says? Well, it sprays. You can see the fan pattern. That's just water coming through it. So when you clean it, you can spray it like this with soap and water. Uh, generally what I do is when I have a hose full of paint, I take the hose off, let the paint get pumped out by water behind it, back into the can so I don't waste it. And then when it starts to run water into the can, I just stop and then I go to my five gallon bucket, put a little soap in it and run it until it runs clean. When you're done, you just want to turn your gauge so that it goes back into the bucket. That releases the pressure from the hose. You'll see everything kind of depressurize. And you can run water through this chamber uh, a little bit longer and it will clean out any paint that's left in there.
It runs constantly when it's not building pressure. And I'll turn it back to the hose. When I turn it on, you'll hear it build pressure. And then it stops. That's how you know you're ready to paint.